I'm I'm just I'm just putting this up there basically um, for everybody on the planet, actually everybody in the cosmos, um, because of something that I uh, I watched a video the other day that was put on by Alex Collier, and he was making reference to um, how do I put this a frequency that was coming up out of a large black hole um, that he said was in color, if you will, sound and color, holographic sound and color, uh, at a frequency that represented a higher dimension, such as 12D, a dimension in which it could, if you will, perceive everything that was below it. And as a result of that, um, how do I put this? It had the ability to not only perceive everything that was below it, which means all the dimensions, which would mean from source all the way up to 12D and back, which essentially means that the perception through which we pursue who we are includes everything that is there. Okay? That's how I perceive, that's my consciousness. Okay? So when he explained that, I thought, well, that's how I experience what it is that I am in consciousness. Okay, which means there are no limits. That's why as a child, I don't want to hold anything captive. So I realized I was in a place in lower density where I'm extremely uncomfortable. Because it's like being massless. Which means the consciousness itself that represents what we're conscious of is not attached to, nor are we holding anything captive anywhere in the cosmos. So when he began to explain that these particular frequencies that were coming up out of sound and light holographically through the perception through which that consciousness was moving through all of the dimensions was to raise it one more, which meant to collapse 3D, which means it's a shift up of each one. And what is sort of rather remarkable about all that is that a number of experiences that I've had throughout my life um, in sort of knowing that you're different from everybody else, even though when I realized through my AB positive bloodline that there is an association that I have to Indians and native tribes that are here, I, I realized I was, even, I was very much different uh, in the sense that um, they do things I would never think of doing, okay? <laughs> So I realize, even though I have an association through a bloodline, I realize that um, there is a much different separation in the perception of consciousness that I have than they do. Okay? So this is where I start realizing the differences that I have by comparing them to how other states of consciousness perceive who they are versus how I perceive who I am. My state of consciousness. And I didn't realize that until Alex Collier had mentioned that. And so it shouldn't be a coincidence why I showed myself that video. Because that's what it happened. That's how it works with my consciousness. My consciousness is showing myself something that is in the future, but really there isn't any time. But I'm supposed to watch it in order to know more about me and why I'm supposed to watch it, which is a reflection of me to learn why I was having all those other experiences that were being described by Alex Collier. And that was that there were beings who were coming in to the much lower densities, okay, from the 12th D, if you will, to 3D, okay? So I could relate to that. I could self-identify with that truth. So I realized he knows something that I knew about before he ever talked about it. Because I knew this as a child. Which is why I didn't want to be here when I was eight years old and asked to go home. Back up. Uh, which lends itself always to why even when Patty Broussard, for example, mentioned to me about uh, starships and weapon systems and protection systems and all this other kind of stuff. I'm going, that's, I don't experience those things where I'm at. In other words, my state of consciousness does not experience everything that Patty described. Patty described. I'm beyond that. Way beyond that. 
so far beyond that, it's like, wow, really? These things exist like that down here? So you begin to realize this is a major, vast separation in consciousness, if you will, between one state that knows these things and experiences these things from a reference point that I have that never does. Okay? So this was sort of how I began learning more about me as time went on here, about my normal realm. Okay? The one I normally occupy in consciousness. Okay? Which is not to experience ever everything that I've experienced and learned down here. So I have to account for that. Alex Collier helped to account for that. To realize through an identification process things he described that I began to realize represented things that I know about me. Okay? So that becomes the projection and the reflection in the bidirectional holographic perception of things that I began to relate to in consciousness. Okay, so that lent credibility to what Alex was saying because I could identify with that. Then when I tied 2013 into the collapse, if you will, that tied directly into everything that I learned through Patty Broussard through the work that she had done to reconnect what essentially was a phantom timeline that had to be collapsed from which was put on a, a basically a separate track with a battery to collapse it, reconnected essentially what you would consider to be another LAN, a large area network, okay, of a communications network in which everything that is self-aware can communicate with itself, right? But there was something very distinct that Alex mentioned that is very much about what I know about my state of consciousness, which is that it's, if you want to think of a beehive as all the bees that sort of, if you want to think of what their function is, bees perform a very function. So if you think of the parameter of the functions, the same way that you might program an operating system, you're the programmer, in other words, you develop the OS2, you develop an Apple program, you develop an operating system like Windows, XP, whatever it might be, okay? All of the information which represents essentially mathematical sequences in which how energy is going to operate in a numerical system in order to have an experience in which consciousness is going to use a numerical or a language-based system in which you thus do what it is your consciousness does to experience what happens as a result of that interface, okay? So when you think of like the bees and hive mind, or what used to be called group think, which means that you have central command. You follow the central commands in which we're all connected. So therefore, what we all experience comes through the central hive. So for example, if you have artificial intelligence that you're using as the means in which all the information and everything is being processed through, then everybody has a connection to the hive mind, or the computer, or the artificial intelligence. So the artificial intelligence becomes the interface in which all of the information is traveling through the network by all of the units of consciousness that are connected to it. You see what I'm saying? So try and think that a higher state of consciousness in 12D is all resonating, if you will, in which we can all communicate with each other like a singularity, which means there is no separation. For instance, when I have a thought and I'm thinking about creating something, it becomes aware of what I just created holographically. Remember how I've mentioned that many times because I've had many experiences, for example, when I've always thought of myself being with other Imagineers, creative holographic artists, in which I'm using as an autonomous being my ability to create and imagine which is infinite and I have the infinite imagination capacity to use all the colors in which that projection, that holographic projection is immediate, which means that's a reflection. I, in other words, I am creating holographically exactly what I'm experiencing immediately at the same time. There's no separation in speed or time. There is no time. 
And that's true for all of the other beings who are creative artists that do that with us. Which means I become aware of what is created using the energy that it's doing it, it with, with its consciousness, okay? The same way that, that I do. So that creates what I've always called a swirling mosaic of the most beautiful art galleries that we're holographically projecting and which we're all experiencing simultaneously. So we have a simultaneously consciousness connecting with each other, okay? Except that we're all autonomous, okay? That's me. That's exactly the way that Alex Collier described it in 12D. That's not a hive mind the way that a beehive works. That's a higher density consciousness. Because one of the things that I began thinking about when I had a conversation, when I realized I had a couple of big brother spirits come down to visit me uh, in Lapahoe two years ago, was how I talked about how, how do we eliminate, okay, the possibility that souls have to suffer in 3D when we measure classrooms, okay? Think about how many souls are harvested here. How do you eliminate that? If you're going to measure the way in which classrooms work in 3D, like in the Milky Way galaxy, when I came in here and I measured immediately right off the bat, I was time vectoring exactly how much was being lost, how much was being gained. Because I began to realize I was crying constantly by the amount of loss that I was experiencing everywhere I was going. How is this possible? This isn't supposed to happen anywhere in the cosmos. Ever. How do you solve that problem? Collapse their density. Raise it up one. That's why we're here. Okay? So I know that I'm not alone. Because I'm always with her. So she knows how deep my heart goes. She knows how much I feel about all this. That's why I knew as a child, I'm not supposed to experience this anywhere that I go in the cosmos. So then they try and say, well, this is why it happens. This is the evolutionary of the process. Then I began saying, okay, how do we speed up the learning so that people don't suffer? Why do they have to suffer for 26,000 years before they finally get to a point where they can ascend? How do we solve that problem? If we are what the light is, which is what love is, we're not supposed to experience anything less than what that is wherever we go. Is that true or not true? Or are we a contradiction in our own terms? I couldn't live with that. Because when I look in the mirror, that means I'm a contradiction of what that is. And I don't live in contradictions. I know what the truth is because I know what I am. So I had to figure out why I'm experiencing something I'm not supposed to experience. So I thrift that over to their corner, explaining to me how this happened. This was particularly true when I realized through Patty Broussard, for example, at the Andromeda Council of 12, okay, were the ones that were actually responsible for allowing the Dratos, Dracos to stay here, upon which, look what they did. Patty explained to all of us how they were trying to collide galaxies. Well, who do we flip that back on? The Andromeda Council? That means it's back on the light, isn't it? That means they have to take account and be responsible for the loss here, don't they? You begin to sort of put all this information together and you begin to realize, because this is the question that I ask. Tell me, how do you explain to a seven-year-old child of the Andromeda Council why a child should trust you? Okay? These are tough questions. I have to answer those questions myself because when a child asks those questions, answers need to be forthcoming. And if you know what love is in living spirit, then I would expect those answers to come truthfully from the light, which is what love is. How do we eliminate suffering and pain in the cosmos? I never thought that, well, that's just the way it is because this is lower creation was was an acceptable answer 
because that tells me that that's a lack of imagination how to solve the problem. So when Alex Collier mentioned about a black hole and sound and light coming up out of a black hole that had never been recorded in the entire history of this galaxy, anywhere in this universe, where did you get that information, Alex? How did you know that? That sort of helped to explain my own presence. So anyway, I thought I had to get that off my chest. Now, I'd done that in private already a couple of years ago with a girl on the planet and everybody else out in the cosmos for which my soul is connected to the source and everything else it is. So I thought for the benefit of everybody out here, this is how I look in the mirror. Because I got to come up with my own answers, let alone the answers that everybody else is going to come up with. Because what does an engineer do? What does a network engineer do? We're a communications network, right? Problem solvers. What's the single biggest problem that we know of that exists in the universe? Losing souls. How do you think Source feels about that? Now, if Source is within me, then I can get the answer to that. It's painful. You think Source might have come up with an answer for that? I leave that for everybody to think about. That's where the answers come from, remember? The sum of its parts is the evolution of the sum of its parts. Isn't that right? We all love you. Bye.